Uh, I'm pitching for Devin. He's working for research. Big weed comes in a variety of flavors. They're all not the same, but they're all problematic. What we've come up with, or extensions come up with, here's the two ones that are, that are problematic. This is our number one weed in soybeans in Minnesota. This is a nightmare that we don't want to face. What they've come up with, and this is Gerald Gotham, who espouses this, never trust a ball of pigweed. They have almost no pubescence. So these are the two that you need to worry about. Look at the elongated here. So the petiole is about a third the length, third to half the length of the leaf. You look over here at the palmer, the petiole is, is longer than is longer, longer than the leaf. Not degrading these other guys. These are, these are problematic too. But these are the ones that are really get into us. Survey done in 2019. 166 respondents rating the weeds. Water Hill was the number one weed. John Ragweed was number two. By a lot. So Devlin developed a couple of uh, basically three projects that we funded. First was a survey of, of the herbicide resistant water hemp. He has water hemp samples, seed samples at harvest collected. It's sent out to his lab in St. Paul, 2020 and 2021. Got a limited number in 2020. Did a much, much better job covering the state in 2021. This also tells me that we've got water hemp pretty much everywhere we grow soybeans. Then he screened them, screened the samples, using one and two to three excess rates of the following compounds, pasture or mazomonics. We could figure out a way to say these names easier and be helpful, right? Roundup. Group 9, glyphosate, atrazine, liberty or glyphosate, Flexstar, Callisto or Mesotron or SPPD, and this one, 2,4-D coding, extended max. <coughs> then he's, after he treated these, these plants from these seeds, he came up with two recommended, two types categories. 3x dose if you had less than 40% survival of 3x dose of those herbicides, class 5 to 7. The 1x dose if you had greater than 40% survival, it was resistant. There's a little bit of overlap in there, but that's how, he, how he's done it. This is what he found out. Of the 21 populations found in, collected in 2020, No resistance to 2,4-D, Dicam, or Glufonis, Glufonis, Liberty. <laughs> yep, I stumbled over my tongue a little bit. And I got a degree in this mess. <laughs> There's a trying or HPPD, Flexstar, and Atrazine. Some resistance starting to show. 95% of the HPPD was of the Samples were HPV susceptible. 86 percent of the samples at least were susceptible. A third of the samples were susceptible. Were susceptible. Five percent worked. Raptor is cheaper to use in overhead irrigation than to irrigate your soybeans using Raptor. Here's the scary part. Enlisted 3X, Cinemax in one rate. What's the thing that you see about this? It ain't dead. 
Racine to for the Racine dicamba resistance in water hemp in the southern states and Illinois. We, quit, we keep on hammering water hemp for the same compounds year after year. It builds resistance and builds resistance quickly. Here's a scarier thing. Of the 21 samples taken in 2020, eight of them were, had one or other water resistance. Eight of them were resistant to glyphosate and ALS. Three of them were resistant to glyphosate and ALS plus the PSI, PS2 inhibitor and the PPO inhibitor. Two of them were full ways. We're down to two rocks. <clears throat> this is why we're starting to see more tillage in the Midwest. Luckily for the guys up here, the samples were concentrated down here, but our problem was this is 2020. We only had one sample in 2020 taken right here, so that we'll have a better understanding next spring after we could test the samples collected this fall. This is a quick one we're going to go about what we're looking at. We'll make sure to be rotation. We've got to worry about herbicide carryover sugar beets. Widespread glyphosate resistance. And poor competitive effect of sugar beet. Sugar beet makes you a lot of money. To the dump. We have a limited herbicide choices, the integrated weed management, and we need to target the seed bank. We've got to get these numbers down before we take it to sugar bees. If you want to glyphosate, control glyphosate resistant water hemp and sugar beets, start by controlling the previous crop. We're looking at the treatments here for this study to, to row spacing. Three week control, a low input herbicide program, a high input herbicide program, high input plus herbicide. Harvest weed seed control. Two sites, Moorhead and Franklin. There are main plots, non treated control, weed free control. For those of you who've never done a weed seed and free control study, Grant, I think you may have. You have to understand your need to go ahead and hire your chiropractor before you start the study. Because you're going to be pulling weeds all the way, all summer long. Here's your low input, high input, and then weed seed. We're stacking a lot of chemicals on here and then harvest weed seed, seed removal prior to harvest of the soybeans so that you can take the weed seed out of the seed bank. 15 row, inch rows, 22 inch rows. Look at the, taking a picture to look at canopy closure. Next spring, in soybean sugar beet, the following year, we're going to pull soil samples from 0 to 25 centimeters in depth. Count the water hemp seed and viability test. Is there a quick way in this harvest wheat seed control program reduce the number of water hemp seeds in that seed bank? prior to sugar beets. If it can't, then we've got some issues. Data's being analyzed, so we've got some pretty pictures. Post herbicide application timing and sequence of enlist and enlist to E3 means. We'll get time to glyphosate, glyphosate. Liberty 2-4 day and some conventional herbicides. <coughs> what when to apply? What's the sequence? We're looking at pre-emerge application, early post at V1, mid post V3, late post R1. We've got 16 treatments, 
Number nine is a control, no, no application. Number one is born alone. Two through five has got liberty. 10 through 13 have its liberty. Let me see. Sometimes you gotta remember to follow the tricks of the trade. We use one as a pre-merge. Nothing in, in these. Here's a treatment. Weed density, meter square. Pre-merge, no pre-merge package, pre-merge package. The pre's really have to set you up. Pre-merge package, no pre-merge package. Here's just one. You're looking at 92% weed control just for corn alone. What are the differences in weed control in those packages? It's a late and early post. If you got a pre pre down. You don't have a free down, look what you got. The pre-package helps set up set up your post packages for success. One-time application of Liberty with a free, one-time application with no free. All right, how many people here are using Liberty? How successful has it been in this part of the world? <coughs> well, it's been in the well, I'm from Texas and we use Liberty a lot because it works real well down there. Then again, we're talking about flying liberty at 95 degrees Fahrenheit. That's one of the concerns I have with these dependence on liberty in this part of the world is the impact of environmental conditions. It's going to give us some inconsistencies. No treaty control. Here's the weeds, weed pictures. No treaty control. We got some soybeans in there. It may be a situation where see the soybeans getting wide away from water in production. Liberty following liberty. Warrant followed by liberty, followed by enlist plus Durango. Warrant followed by liberty, followed by enlist plus Durango plus dual. We can clean it up. Doing it cheap is a hard part. And so there's outreach efforts with the devil is working on. And acknowledging his, uh, his collaborators, Tom Peters, Dave Nickline, Ryan Wheeler, and then these other individuals. Any questions? Yes, sir. Did you see increased control when you added the group 15 in the post? post, the post. What, what I saw, what I'm seeing from this data set is if you got a warrant, if you got a pre, pre down, the warrant is a pre, you can select any of the post, any of the, or the early to late posts, early to mid late, any but post selection did a good job. If you didn't have a pre down, then it varied. And one of the things you got to remember, the flex star would have been considered one of the chemicals that you're talking about. I'm talking about the dual. The oh, the dual. Having, dual. having the residuals matching that post application where you're seeing increase like the lake emergence. It would help it would help with the lake emergence as long as it wasn't dealing with a a herbicide, a post, a dual resistant pack, a herbicide pack, a weed. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Chief, put the warrant label on beets because you don't use up too many grapes. I can't hear you. Is there anything changed with the warrant label on tree beets? Not that I know. You don't put that on post. On sugar beets? Yeah. But this is applied to soybeans. 
Oh, I see what you're saying. If you put it on post versus free on the ship, on the sort of on spot. Would you, if it's not labeled for sure, if it's warrants labeled for sure, it means only post, that's where you apply. Right, and things will get similar control of two weeks, probably what, three weeks later, four weeks later? That, that's going to get to you the universal PhD answer in pins. Uh, and the training you get, what kind of situation, what kind of issue conditions that we got, what's the random matter levels, what's the soil type. There's going to be some, but we're in an area, we're in, in an area where we're trying to find sugar beet weeds in the soil, in the, in the crop that's pre-season, it's a rotational crop. And the whole, whole kicker here is we've got to get the number of weed seed back down. 